What's going on guys? In this video I'm going to share the process of how I photograph uh, wedding ceremonies. This is going to be one of many many wedding photography tutorials that I'm going to do. I cannot upload all the videos. I cannot make all the videos in one shot. So it's going to take some time until I have pretty much all the topics covered. So in this video I'm going to, uh, I'm going to discuss the process. I am not going to talk about lighting and equipment because that's going to be a totally separate video. Um, you need different equipment to photograph weddings in a church versus in a hotel uh, or or an outdoor wedding okay but that is something we're going to discuss later in future so let's talk about the whole process all right I like to first start off with photographing the church from outside and I'm not talking I'm not talking about you know spending 30 minutes taking so many pictures just a couple of shots so you know that okay the wedding ceremony is is about to start so take a wide angle shot like this I really like to photograph the, the door as well because this is where the bride and groom enter I think it's it's it, it has a symbolic value in in my opinion all right so start off I start off with with the church and if you are starting the wedding at the church because sometimes people don't have enough uh, the budget is not big enough where they are hiring you for the dress obsession uh, things like this so if you are gonna start from the church then I would highly recommend that you arrive early the reason why you wanna arrive early so you can take a few shots of the church from inside when it's empty okay uh, I really like these type of shots so take a wide angle shot in landscape position and you know take one in in portrait position but for for an empty shot like this empty church like this obviously you're gonna have to arrive early if you have some extra time take a few detail shots um, again the, I mean here I have uh, it's a cross uh, if it's uh, you know different religion you know Muslim or your Hindu um, you know Buddha Jewish anything so obviously anything that is related to their religion you want to photograph okay so now the ceremony is basically starting so the flower girl walks in and this is uh, this process is it's not tricky but you if you are photographing with another person with your with your partner you basically I would highly recommend that both of you don't shoot the uh, the beginning of the ceremony at, from the same angle it, it, it doesn't make any sense you're gonna get very similar shots so one person can stand you know uh, up front and photograph as the bride is coming in and the other person can go in the back you know balcony if you are allowed now if it's not in a church then you know one person could be on the right side one person could be on the left side or if you're the only photographer then you know it really doesn't matter you, you know middle part if um, if you have that opportunity so make sure that there is somebody photographing the bride coming in with the father and if that is if that area is covered and you have an extra person an assistant let's say um, you know your wife helping you or you just have a partner that you shoot with get the other person to do to cover other angles so here's a flower girl coming in I took a shot this was very very difficult um, there were so many people on, on on each side so my advice to you is don't skip on the shot take the shot um, and later you can crop stuff to make it better okay um, here you can see I just wanted to show you bright coming in with the father this is not a portfolio shot it's a terrible shot and it's not my fault obviously you can see a guy here with with with, with the camera um, I don't know why he thought that his speed light would bounce off a 50-foot church ceiling we were actually using um, pro photo uh, studio strobes that's that's how bad the light uh, was um, anyway not a usable shot obviously videographers monopod here you know too many people in here but just to give you an idea it's still 
an okay shot as a filler, okay? Instead of me taking the same shot as my cousin did from the front, you know, we have we this way we were able to mix it up, okay? As soon as um, that is, you know, taken care of, oh, real quick, if there's no way for you to go in the back or in the balcony, then one person should be photographing the room. As soon as he sees the bride, you know, they're normally, you know, they're in a in a awe. So photograph the one person can photograph the groom as soon as he sees the bride. Uh, these expressions are priceless, okay? And the brides they love this. And the other person can photograph the bride walking in with the father. Alright, so now the ceremony um, after the ceremony starts First thing I like to do is that I like to take shots from the back. And the reason why I do this is because if I start photographing the bride and groom from this side or from the front, and later if I go in the back to do these type of shots and the priest says, you may kiss the bride, I'm going to miss that important shot because that is the most important shot of the wedding. So in advance, I already know that this ceremony is going to take 45 minutes or an hour. So if I if I have enough time, I'm quickly going to run in the back and start taking shots um, like these. And later, I'll move forward and do the shots from front. Again, this is a filler shot. This is not a portfolio shot. Why? Well, these chairs are all empty. So it does not look good. Otherwise, it would have been fine if if uh, if you didn't did not have empty benches. Um, real quick, I want to show you guys. We're gonna, we're not going to discuss this in this video, which is the lighting. You can see there are two strobes set up. These are pro photo strobes, studio strobes, and that's how we shot this wedding. Um, we were we were able to bounce the light off of the ceiling right here. It's not a it's not a black or a dark brown ceiling, so we had no issues. Uh, but in a, in a shot like this, uh, or this, this was basically shot using an ambient light. I grabbed my tripod, put the camera on a tripod, and I think the shutter speed I got was one, one thirteenth of a second. So shot, shot like these, you can't do handheld. Um, so make sure tripod is there with you so you can quickly take these type of shots. All right, moving on. Take a shot like this, it's just a filler because you have to deliver, you know, 300, 400 pictures depending on, you know, what, what kind of package they have. Then I'll move up a little forward, take, a, take some close-ups from the back. Um, and this is, you know, your regular. At this point, I'm, I'm moving around if I am allowed. Um, I've done a couple weddings where I had to pick a spot and I had to stay there. In, in, in a case like this, you're compromising on uh, composition, and I relay that to my client in advance that, look, there's so much I can do uh, when it comes to composition, and they, they understand that, okay? Um, all right, so as the ceremony is going on, this, this is still the initial stage, I'm going to start doing my detail shots, and these are, these are the, ty uh, the type of detail shots that I'm talking about. Um, something like this. Now, there's a lot of luck involved in this. You know, don't think that you know this is all photographers. You know, skill. It's not. Um, if she were not holding her flower bouquet like this, this would have been a bad shot. If the middle person uh, were not holding the flower bouquet like this, it would have been a bad shot. I was able to put my uh, put myself in this position, so you know where I could compose a shot like this, but if I were not allowed to be in this area, there's not much I can do. Um, shot like this, you know, there were, I think, two or three bridesmaids, um, but I was able to only get one. So you have to make the best out of the situation, but if you make a list of these shots in advance, um, you know, first couple times you may struggle, but then it's just going to become second nature to you. So as soon as the ceremony starts, take some shots from the back, move forward, start doing these detail shots. All right. Um, sometimes uh, the wedding is happening on a Sunday. They include the, the Sunday, uh, the, the mass in it. So this is part of that. I consider this as uh, the detail shot. So uh, while the ceremony is going on, the mass is going on, you can take shots like these. Okay. 
this is all taken with the studio strobes that's why you see so much color in this and if, if had i shot this with just ambient light increasing my iso there would be no color in this in this picture and i'll i'll explain that um, when we cover the equipment and, and lighting and all that stuff okay moving on again part of the detail shots once you're done with your detail shots then you just start to photograph whatever that's happening you know the priest the bride and the groom so take some wide angle shot mix it up get a couple of close-up shots like this um, you know groom smiling or, or the bride smiling uh, things like this uh, wide angle shot um, uh, from an outdoor wedding all right now it's time for the ring barrier kit if there is one you know you don't have to take so many shots of this just a couple of shots would would be enough all right holding hands uh, it, it's a really nice touch uh, while they're you know getting married let me just show you different composition because this is something that I cannot I cannot teach you it's it's it pretty much depends on the rules the rules of the church and um, the rules of the church and what kind of angle you're getting so different pictures different weddings different pictures I'm sorry if it's not perfectly aligned but you guys get the idea um, here I took the shot from the left side so I'm sorry right side here I got the shot from the right side and here I got the shot from another angle so it, there's really no way to tell in advance you know where you're gonna position yourself but always keep an eye on it when the ceremony starts and you're done with your detail shots and everything uh, and if you are allowed to move find that spot where you know that you can capture uh, shots like these or when they're exchanging the rings because that is very important shot like these they're gonna hold these hands for a good you know 15 20 seconds I would say at least so you still have enough time where you can move around and get a nice angle um, I would recommend you know take a couple of shots one you can do a wide angle and one you can do close-up so here's a wide angle quickly zoom in and get a close-up shot like that okay uh, exchanging of the rings same thing here let me move the picture here all right same thing jeez sorry guys god I suck at this um anyway uh, here you could see there was no way to get the shot from the back so in a case like this you have to take the shot from the front and let's just hope that you're allowed to move because if you're not allowed to move you <laughs> you could be uh, you could be screwed so find that angle find that angle and it's it's gonna be different every single time you know here's here's the third one totally different angle and you know so far I've been fortunate I've never missed any of these shots um, but don't don't panic you know all right next thing all right right about now they're pretty much just you know exchanging wows things like this uh, take take those shots uh, shots like these you'll have to it takes some time to get a nice shot like with a smile because if they're talking when they're changing the vows sometimes the lips just don't come out right they're they're making a really weird face so you may have to take four five or six shots so and out of these you'll you'll definitely get at least two shots that are that are nice okay and then you know the the whole kissing thing and same thing with kissing uh, there's no way to predict where you will be standing in advance so find that angle and if you're allowed to move you know don't worry about you know what people are gonna say that you're moving around yeah you your job is to get the shot so make sure um, that in advance you're paying attention that okay this is where the priest is standing there's no way for me to get the shot from that angle this is where I'm gonna stand you know shot like this He's smiling, so this shot looks okay. But if he were not smiling, this shot would have been completely destroyed. Okay, so I try to avoid the priest 
in the background if possible. So go for go for tighter shots, basically. All right. This was probably the most difficult uh, ceremony I've ever shot. This was the only spot where I could stand. I was not allowed to move from here. So I was standing here, and my cousin was standing on the right side. And if you know, if if they did not book a second shooter, you know, and you are not allowed to move, just imagine the entire wedding from one angle. You know, so sometimes it's unfortunate. Um, not a big fan of this shot obviously this thing I mean it's still acceptable uh, but you you have to make the best out of what's what's thrown at you okay all right after the kissing see if the if the people are still smiling clapping quickly take a couple of shots let me show you the difference between using studio strobes and shooting ambient in ambient light only. This was shot in ambient light only um, because the ceiling was was completely dark brown so we couldn't bounce anything off of the ceiling. We used an umbrella but in certain sh shots it was casting a lot of shadows. So then I decided to go with just you know using ambient light increase the ISO and shot you know wide open. So pictures come out a little soft uh, especially when you increase the ISO and here we use the strobe and that's why you see so much more color in this and that's uh, that's the difference okay okay for some reason it got stuck where was I alright so after this they they're going to you know light these candles um, I've seen this in almost every wedding so if this is going on make sure you take a shot like this and then something like this, it's a, I, I, I call this detail shot. So something like this, uh, where it's, you know, telling the story and just to add a, a, a more fillers to your, to your collection. Okay. Now at this time, you know, the ceremony is pretty much just ending. People are going to start exiting. Don't worry about these small point and shoot cameras. I think these small point and shoot cameras look really nice especially when people are smiling the thing I don't like is if uh, when people are using big DSLRs that's when it, it really draws the attention towards that big camera then your main subject so take you know a, a few shots of people leaving the bride and the groom leaving and you know that's that's pretty much it it's not uh, it's not that difficult okay and in the beginning yes it's intimidating but you know, once you do a couple of weddings, you you, you get in the groove. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a main uh, wedding photography tutorial video for you guys, and I'm going to put uh, a bunch of links on them because we're going to go over how to shoot the reception, how to do the dress up session of the bride and the groom, how to photograph um, uh, you know, shoes or the wedding cake people dancing yeah that's like the most fun part you know there are different focusing modes you will be using uh, when you're photographing people uh, dancing on the floor so there there's a lot to cover obviously everything can't be done in one video otherwise it would be five hours long so um, future in future I'm gonna make a bunch of videos and post a link on that main photography uh, main wedding photography tutorial video if you guys have any special requests please let me know so I can cover that topic and if you learned something new in this video please make sure you rate the video and comment thank you so much hope all is well and I'll talk to you guys later